have your attention. Hello. <laughs> we've got a we've got a um, robust crowd this evening. It's good to see all these folks in the uh, in the meeting room with us this afternoon. We are calling to order the September Tifton City Council meeting. It is 5:30. And uh, there are agendas uh, by Ms. Lucretia back here, if you, anyone would like to, uh, to grab an agenda and follow along with us. At this time, I would like to introduce Pastor Rodney Owen with First Baptist Church of Tata. Rodney is going to give our prayer. And uh, Rodney, I invite you to come up and, and we'll, we'll listen attentively. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Let's join together in prayer. Father, we thank you that you have given the place of authority, Lord, but help us to remember that what your words were through Jesus were clear, that all authority is given by you. Therefore, Lord, tonight I ask you, God, that you give this council wisdom, remembering the words of James chapter 1, verse number 5, that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally. I pray, God, for you to give them wisdom, give them guidance, bless them as they take on the business of this city. And I pray, God, bless their steps. And, Lord, I pray that you would just do what needs to be done through them, Lord, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Owen. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I'd like to call on Lieutenant Dunstan with the Tifton Police Department to offer our pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you, Lieutenant Dunstan. All right, gentlemen, uh, we are missing two councilmen, as you can see. Uh, Councilman Frank Sales is under the weather, so he will not be with us this evening. And Councilman Terrell will be joining us late. He had a previous appointment, so he'll be coming in hopefully in the next 20 or 30 minutes, and we'll, we'll pick up. Uh, but we do have a quorum. Uh, with the three of us, so we will move forward with our agenda. At this time, I would like to take to uh, I'd like to take a motion for the approval of the agenda, please. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to change the order in new business, uh, moving eight and nine to uh, eleven and twelve, and then move ten, eleven, and twelve to eight, nine, and ten. So we'll move. So we're basically item. moving eight and nine to the bottom of the new business list. Okay, and moving then everything, everything else will stay in order. Okay, all right. That makes sense. Got it. <laughs> okay. All right. So we have a motion to that effect to make that change. We're not adding or changing anything, just changing the order. And uh, so Wes has made the motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Next item is the approval of the minutes, and those were emailed to us, and they are in our council packet. So uh, we've got several to uh, to approve. If you want to, if you haven't read those already, please do. And then I'll take a motion. Actually, we just have. Uh, one set of minutes to approve, so I'm sorry about that. Okay. I'll second. All right, so we have a motion second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Jessica, have you got the um, information for uh, Mr. Swearing and Kristen? All right, Ms. Kristen Morrison, if you'll join me down here.
volunteerism that is always present in our community. Now we have two special presentations. And I'm going to ask uh, Buffy Hankinson, if Buffy, if you'll join me down front, I have a proclamation that we are very honored to be able to provide today. You want to tell us a little bit about what you do and, and why you're wearing purple and all these stripes and what's going on? Is it the Michael? Absolutely. I'm with the Alzheimer's Association. Is it what? I have two of my amazing volunteers here, and it's a co-worker at Sandy Hills. Um, over 140,000 folks who are living with Alzheimer's. It's a progressive detrimental disease. It's the most expensive disease in America. And um, we're here to raise awareness and, um, and claim purple for a Tifton for the month of September. And also let you know about our walk to end Alzheimer's coming up here in Tifton on October 27th. Um, it's an AVAC, starts at 8 a.m. And I will say this, we will be done before Georgia-Florida game. That's always something important. Um, but we're here, um, we serve 36 counties across southwest Georgia, um, and we just want to bring awareness to those who have the disease and the caregivers who are suffering right along with them. Actually, I just want to say, and Julie said it earlier, we rely on volunteers, and the city of Tifton has been amazing for us. We, it seems like every time we ask, uh, people say yes even came in here tonight and we had people talking about the walk and how they want to support, how they want to help. So moving the office over here about seven years ago now, which is hard to believe it's been that long, uh, but you guys just continue to amaze me. It's just, um, they call it the friendly city and I, it's not a name they just pulled out of the air. It's, it's true, so thank you. And so you gotta say first responders, the police department, fire department, thank you guys for what you do too, because we really appreciate it. Uh, says, whereas Alzheimer's disease is a progressive degenerative disease of the brain causing deterioration in memory and thinking, as well as judgment and reasoning ability, it also affects behavior, emotions, and the ability to perform self-care. And whereas the Alzheimer's Association is the world's leading voluntary health organization in Alzheimer's care, support, and research for more than 5 million Americans living with Alzheimer's in the United States and the people who care for them. And whereas the month of September has been chosen in recognition of the individuals, families, friends, and caregivers dealing with the devastating effects of Alzheimer's disease, the researchers who are seeking a cause or causes and cure, and the educational programs and support services provided by the Alzheimer's Association. Now therefore be it proclaimed that I, Julie Smith, Mayor of the City of Tiffin, do hereby proclaim September 2018 as Alzheimer's Awareness Month and urge our citizens to help ease this burden for individuals, families, and caregivers as we search for a cure. In witness whereof, I accept my hand and cause the great seal of the city of Tiffin to be affixed the 17th day of September. So let me sign this for you, and it will be official. And so everyone is encouraged to be supportive, wear purple, participate in the walk, volunteer time, donate money, anything they can.
Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, We are uh, literacy volunteers at Tiff, Tiff County. I want to thank the mayor and the city council members for having us here today. Um, literacy volunteers works through tutors to break the cycle of illiteracy here in the county and the city. Um, too many children go to kindergarten. They don't even know their alphabet. We work with parents and grandparents um, to help them so that fosters down through those children in our communities. We would not be able to do it without the support of the community, so thank you. This year, our 19th Annual Carnival of Knowledge is Thursday, September 27th, and we are excited to announce our first platinum sponsor, which is the Howard Center. So thank you to Dr. Drew and Kayla Howard, Melissa Carter, and the team. They have a check here to present us to the organization, which is gonna go a long, long way in our community, so thank you. Thank you, Mayor Smith. We just uh, are excited to work with the uh, and to support the volunteers uh, for literacy. Uh, the work they do is amazing, and we're the ben all of us are the beneficiaries of that. Uh, us, we have employees who are direct beneficiaries of that. We have many patients who are, and we see the result every day of their amazing work. So thank you very much, and we're excited to support it. Thank you for letting us be here. cannot read or write in Georgia, roughly 1.1 million adults over the age of 18 have not completed high school or received a GED diploma. And whereas the literacy rates are highest among the economically disadvantaged and are closely associated with unemployment, high crime rate, and welfare dependency, and whereas parents who cannot read or write perpetuate an intergenerational cycle of illiteracy as they lack the skills to teach their children such daily tasks as how to read a medicine bottle, follow a bus schedule, do comparative shopping, make correct change, or complete school homework. And whereas illiteracy is a social problem of American society, which can be alleviated through increased public awareness and a broader support for volunteer literacy programs on the local, state, and national levels. And whereas 20% of the adults in the city high school diploma or a GED certificate and whereas residents of Tifton benefit from the services offered by the literacy volunteers of Tifton Tiff County, which include basic skills instruction, GED, GED test preparation, GED test fee uh, scholarships, and English language classes, and whereas the community support of literacy volunteers of Tifton and Tiff County helps to improve the quality of life where we all live and work. Now, therefore, I, Julie Smith, Mayor of the City of Tifton, do hereby proclaim September 23rd through 29th as Adult Education and Family Literacy Week, and September 27th as Literacy Day in Tifton, Georgia. So congratulations. Let me sign this, and it will become official. All right. It is official. Victor, I will hand this off to you, the president of the board, and say thank you very, very much for all the hard work that you do. I've had the opportunity to come and see some of the classes before, and I think it's just amazing. So you are The next item on our agenda is the time for public comments, and I have just one person who has signed in to speak, and I will call on Mr. Spud Bowen. Spud, if you'll come up to the table here, and uh... I'm Spud Bowen, 811 Murray Avenue, you Tifton, Georgia. You know how this Georgia. goes. <laughs> Dr. Howard's right here. Dr. Howard. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, he not only does this, I'm also president of the Touchdown Club here at Tifton. And not only is he a super sponsor for the football team, but every Thursday, if our kids need it, they get B12, B complex shots, oh, wow. and fluids if they need it. It's been a hard week of practice. And they go community wide and thank you. I want to thank you both. Uh -huh. 
There, there are 150 football players that really like this. <laughs> and it's an OBGYN place. <laughs> yeah. So, Who knew? <laughs> they, they does so, he's, he does an awful lot. You're really right. absolutely does. right. Thank you, Dr. Howell, and your staff. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today to, uh, which I'm sure you probably got a lot of phone calls since yesterday about the article that appeared in the paper yesterday. And the first thing I want to say is when 2005, I don't think there was anybody on this, was on this council. There's not anybody in management that's here. However, agreements are agreements. And so I would urge you, for the sake of economic development for the future of Tifton and Tiff County, because we have great schools, we have a great location, that you get through this as quick as you can and resolve it so that all of us can be okay because I pay county taxes mm -hmm. just like you. Yes. So I kind of feel like I'm getting hit both ways. Yeah. Y'all file suit. The county turned around and had to answer the suit. So I, I'm getting hit both ways. And, you know, there's a lot of smoke there. We need to put out that fire and, and do it quickly for the sake of this county, this city, and this entire community. The other thing I want to speak on, and I forgot to do it, is the pension plan. Uh, we originally, I was part of the original city commission that changed from GMA to AMB, I think it is now. I have no money with them. They don't control anything that I have because of that agreement I did in 1994. I just felt like that was wrong. But I do know that we gave them $3.4 million. I know over the period of years you put in $3 million. So that's $6.4 million, and that account is now worth almost $24 million with that small of a contribution. And I wish I had had some money to put with them. I would have enjoyed that return. And I would ask you to please think long and hard with that before putting it in a GMA because I'm worried about what the future liability of the city will be by going into that big pool. And I just ask you to please consider that. I thank you all for what you do. Uh, I know you're all going to retire to the Bahamas off all this big salary that you get <laughs> serving up here and for all this argument. But thank you for serving. And again, I urge you to do it steadily, but do it quickly. And let's put this to rest. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Spud. I appreciate, appreciate your comments. I'd like to kind of piggyback on that and um, make a, a statement to our employees. And many of you are here tonight, and I appreciate our employees being with us tonight. And I want you to hear the words that I'm going to say, but not only these my words, these are the words of this city council and our management team. Um, nobody, nobody likes to get in front of a judge. Nobody likes to go to court. Nobody lays awake at night and says, how can we stir up controversy in this community? That is not who we are. That is not how we function. And that is not how we do business. We all, every single one of us, are Tift County residents. And Mr. Bowen, you are absolutely right. We all pay city and county taxes. So to our employees, I would like to say that the city did file a declaratory judgment seeking resolution to longstanding issues we've had with the county over water and sewer services. And Rob, you may smack my hand a little bit, but the county acknowledged that that was an appropriate action. And a declaratory action is nothing but party A says it should be this way, party B says it should be this way, and neither party can come to resolution on what the answer is. So you go before the court and you say, here's everything. Help us figure this out. Help us come to resolution so we can put this to bed, we can move forward and be the great community that we are. A declaratory action was filed, and because it involves a court, it is called a lawsuit. But it's really it's kind of throwing yourself in, the, in front of the court to say, help us. We have got a tangled up mess here that neither party can agree on, and we're not going to get anywhere until someone helps us untangle this and puts it to rest. That's what we did. We received a countersuit that included not just that, but a list as long as my arm of other allegations. They are seeking, they being Tiff County, over $22 million in damages from the city of Tifton. The very residents that are also residents of Tiff County. 
let that sink in. And you're right. You are right, Spud. You are absolutely right. We are City of Tifton residents and we are Tift County residents. I want everyone to know that this city intends on defending the allegations made by the county vigorously and aggressively. We've discussed these allegations with our legal team and feel that these allegations that were made against the city are without merit. The city officials will not be making any further comment regarding these issues since it involves pending litigation. But I want you to hear from me, City of Tifton employees, every single one of you, and City of Tifton residents. We will not take this lying down. We will move judiciously, professionally, and we will do everything in our power to make sure that resolution is received and that we come together as a community once again. We have an extremely competent and experienced legal team that's handling this case, and we are confident for a favorable outcome for all residents, regardless of your address. So City of Tifton employees, please know that is the truth. That is how we feel. That is how we stand here before you tonight declaring that statement. So um, I'll be glad to, we, we may, if you want to ask some questions, we're very limited. I'll, I'll probably have to defer anything to Rob. I don't know if there's any, any comments to be made regarding that, if any of the other council would like to make a comment. Look at that rain. But uh, I want you to hear that from me and from your council and from your management team. Hmm? You like that rain, okay. Well then let's move on. We've got a lot to go over this evening. <laughs> All right, the next item on our agenda is our consent agenda. And I do want to remind those in attendance that we do have a workshop that occurs about uh, a week or two weeks prior to our council meeting, and that at that time we do discuss all of the items that we'll be discussing and voting on tonight. At the workshop, we do not vote. We save that for, for the, the regular council meeting. So we have four items on our consent agenda. We can take those together or we can take them independently, however y'all would prefer to do that. Okay, you want to make a motion? So moved. Second. All right, so we have a motion to approve all four of the consent agenda items, and we have a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And I will remind you, we did change the order under new business, so the next two items uh, are the resolution for the transfer of assets and then the retirement agreement. Uh, I do want to introduce Randy Logan. Randy's kind of over here behind the pillar. Randy is with the Georgia Municipal Association. Uh, he and Malachi, I'm sorry, Malachi, I did not write down your last name. I'm so sorry about that. Malachi is the um, actuary for the plan. Does anyone have any questions? Or I think we're supposed to do number 10 first, which is the review of the proposed plan for road closures of the hospital. Yeah, I thought you wanted eight and nine and then 10. Well, basically eight and nine, everything moves up. 8 and 9 goes to 11 and 12, and everything moves up. I'm sorry. Well, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> I misunderstood. I misunderstood. I wrote down something totally different. Okay. All right. Well, let me, let's come back to that. Uh, at this time, we are in item number 10, which is the review of the proposed plans for the road closures and realignment to accommodate the hospital expansion. Y'all be careful. Thank you for what you do. That was, always makes me nervous. I hate to hear that tone. Okay, we're going to talk about the road closure instead. I apologize about that. I wrote down the wrong thing. <laughs> Keep me straight. Thank you. Thank you. If you'll recall, we did go over this. Um, uh -oh, we must have some water issues. All right, you have a map in front of you of the proposed road closures. Uh, let's see. Mayor Costello, as you may recall, uh, there was a presentation made uh, by Mr. Chris Dorman at the hospital regarding of new development they want to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, to do this new development, they are requesting the closure of a portion of 18th Street. Uh, I think what is shown on your, uh, on your map shows the location of where they would like to make that closure. 
uh, goes from Old Omega Road, which I, I mean, sorry, Old Osceola Road, that will then go to uh, the new entrance. In addition to that uh, closing that section of road, they also are asking to re relocate John Ward Drive. Basically, that relocation of John Ward Drive will match up with the entrance to the hospital. Uh, they are also asking for, uh, I believe it's uh, Lee Avenue and a portion of 18th Street and John Ward Drive to go from a 30 foot right of way, I'm sorry, you know, street mm -hmm. to a 24 foot street. And as, after looking at the land development code, it appears that those streets could be classified as, as marginal uh, access streets, which, which is a minimum of 24 feet. So although they're looking for a variance, I really don't know that a variance would be appropriate, but it does appear that because it does fit, fit the definition of a marginal access street, that requirement 24 feet, so they think that is also doable. So that's what's before the council. Um, I don't believe Mr. Dorman is here tonight. But that's, that's basically their request, and um, I'll leave that to y'all. Okay. Is, well, is, all that, is all that property along the, I guess, 18th Street, is that owned by the hospital now? Or it is. They bought all that? It is. Both sides of the road is hospital property. <laughs> You're talking about this, this section right here? That's in orange. Or where it wants to be closed. Okay. Oh, okay, in the yeah. orange, okay. It's far along. Okay. Any other comments, questions? I will take a motion to some effect concerning the road closures and realignment. So moved. All right, I have two motions. Who wants to claim a, let's let Mr. Terrell. <laughs> All right, so Johnny has made the motion to, uh, to approve. Uh, I would love to second that. You will second, okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? <laughs> I don't think that's an option, that's but option. we'll take it. Well, we'll take it, that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we just yeah. love Jack. Yeah. I know. Yeah, Okay. All right. So now we are, now that I'm thoroughly confused on the order that we changed because I read everything down wrong. Now you go to 11, go which is the new number 10. Or number 9. Well, what you take five? This is why I can't. Now it's a resolution for authorizing the transfer of assets. Okay. Now we're in, okay, we're back in, in, in order. Okay. And Randy is here. <laughs> Randy, sorry about that confusion. Now, I will take full blame for that. I wrote things down wrong. I don't know what I was thinking. But we appreciate you being here with no, us tonight. No, uh, good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me here. Again, my name's Randy Logan. I'm Deputy Executive Director with the Georgia Municipal Association in the Retirement and Employee Benefits area. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that tonight that, that you will take action to, to for this resolution and to start the process of transferring administration to the Georgia Municipal Employee Benefits System. And by doing so, you'll be joining 288 other local governments from around the, around the state that see the value in our program. This is a, a system that was created by an act of the state legislature in 1965. And, and so I just want to briefly go over some of the benefits of being in the program and answer any questions. Uh, contrary to, to some belief of some, by joining this system that you'll lose control of your plan. That's simply not the case. This plan would still belong to the city of Tifton. Uh, mayor and council would be the governing authority in this plan and all the rules and regulations in the plan would be contained in a city ordinance. The assets in your plan that you have would stay in a retirement trust that belongs to the city of Tifton. And the only purpose for this money, the only thing the money could be used for would be to pay the benefits out of the plan or the cost of administering the, this plan. So it's still your plan, uh, the benefits in your, in your plan, the money in your plan is still in your trust account. Some of the benefits of belonging to the program to the city are that your assets are combined with the assets of these other 288 cities for investment purposes, which is a good thing for the city. With 
uh, it's about two point, a little over $2.2 billion in total right now. With that kind of assets, that kind of asset base, you can get the better asset managers for a cheaper administrative fee than you can with, with 25 or even 50 or $100 million. We get some of the best asset managers in the country, and it's shown in our returns. Uh, just as of June 30th, um, the one-year returns were 10.3%, over three years, 8.9%, five years, 10.6%. And the average annual return for 37 years as of the end of 2017 was 9.49%. Tell you, if I, with my personal investments, if I could have made that, we'd be having this meeting on the back of my yacht. So uh, that, that's a great, the, the benefit of these, getting these kind of returns is that the city doesn't have to contribute as much money to the plan in order to provide the benefits for the employees. So that's number one. Number two is you get the economies of scale. We have professional staff in Atlanta that that's all we do is retirement. And, and by having these people and, and having the other cities in this program, you get the benefits of economies of scale for administrative fee purposes. So the administrative fee is much less. And the, you also get the benefits of our professional legal staff in Atlanta, which is part of your administrative fee. There are no other costs to doing any legal work to the plan. They also keep your plan up to date with any changes in state and federal law so that your plan is always in compliance with law. So that's benefits for the city. Some benefits to for the employees are they've got a standardized plan. There aren't any, any really odd things in, in a plan because it's, it's kind of standardized. For example, is, uh, in your previous plan, picking a beneficiary was not very flexible. That's something has been, that has been changed in this plan to give your employees a little more flexibility and a little more freedom to, to make the person the beneficiary they would like to have with their money. Uh, we also provide regular education to your employees so they understand and can actually plan for retirement. We have two full-time staff that that's all they do and I understand that they've already been working with Denise and the Human Resources to plan some scheduled meetings. We also pro provide an annual benefits estimate to the employees so they understand what their benefit is and we're actually in the process of, of changing that to where we can pull in all of the retirement sources to give them a full and complete picture of what their retirement could be using the defined benefit plan, any defined contribution savings they have and even projections on social security. So in one small booklet they can can see all of the benefits that they, they might get in retirement. And I think uh, another one and finally is uh, portability of service. By belonging to this system, time and credit at other cities can travel through the system to help employees get vested here faster. So for vesting purposes and for benefit eligibility purposes, someone could come from another city which is and, and, and have that service travel with them for those two purposes, which makes it easier for you to recruit and, and hire other employees from, from other local governments. So unless there are other questions, I won't bore you with any more details, but I just wanted to make a few brief comments about that and okay. make myself available for any questions. Okay, thank you. Any, any questions? Um, Randy, on the, the liquidation of now, I'm, I'm assuming you're in close contact with, with Richard. Yes, sir. And specifically bonds. Yes, sir. Coming up on September 30th, end of the quarter. So the timing is going to be such that. That is that correct. Yes, that, right that is time. correct. I've been in touch with our, our investment advisors on, on our end, and we've had our accounting people and finance people. Uh, they're available. I'm not sure if they've spoken to Mr. Mooney recently, but they have spoken in the past. And he, there was just an email as of I believe last Thursday or Friday that that Pete had forwarded to me from Mr. Mooney saying, "Hey, I need to, to speak to someone in your finance department." And so, I know when we talked several months ago, there there was a time within the month if all this money got transferred at a certain time, and we got full benefit for that month. Sure, sure. That's gonna happen? Yes, that's the plan to happen. It depends on, on the 
they transfer from from Mooney, from okay, Mr. So Mooney. Yes, sir. Okay, so so I mean he's clear because he and I have talked about it as well. Sure, I can touch base with him again to make sure that we're all on the same page or to, to reconfirm that we're all on the same page. But I can do that. Okay, I mean, we we do not want to lose a month's no. earnings because no. of a timing issue. No. Period. No, you you do not. You do not want to, to lose any money. So we're going to work to make sure that that you do not. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Mayor, just I want to just comment sure. uh, over a year ago, you asked me to look at the retirement mm -hmm. program. Uh, in short, a lot has happened over 20 years. I, I certainly respect that. Uh, but uh, obviously with savings and the plan, and we've had a couple uh, different variations. GMA has helped us uh, to, to, to cure that. But there's two things I want to make clear. Number one is uh, our retirees, nothing is going to happen uh, towards the, the, the pension, what the retirees are getting. There's not going to be any late checks. There's not going to be any changes for them except a uh, change in, okay. in management. So I wanted to make sure that, and then for current employees, uh, if, you, if you're part of the old plan, uh, that doesn't change either. Uh, there's, everything is, is carried over from our old plan, so really nothing is going to take effect. Uh, we did have a couple enhancements, uh, which I think Randy mentioned. But lastly, uh, communications uh, from GMA, uh, from my office, down to the employees to make sure that we communicate what is going on with our retirement. That is very, very important to us, and we're going to do that. But lastly, I wanted to thank Denise and Karen publicly for the work that they did on this. I can't tell you the hours and the amount of information that was skewed, missing, Etc. that they put together uh, on behalf of the city of Tipton. So a great seven months work. And I can tell you now we are, it was a good exercise and audit, but uh, we are certainly uh, in the right direction. And, uh, and I thank Randy and his team for, for okay. helping us along. So all right, thank you. Have. Thank you, Pete, for, for that clarification. Let me make one other comment. Okay. Just, because I've been very involved at Nation Go over the last couple of years, and, and Richard Mooney and I have become close. We've had numerous conversations about this whole thing. Uh, you know, I was hesitant, Peter will tell you, and Randy will tell you, I pushed back, pushed back. We've had lots of conversations. But at, at the end of the day, GMA and GMS can, can earn a higher return. Richard admits that. Now, it's because the way things are set up and the way they can invest that Richard doesn't have that benefit. He, under, he understands that. Um, so we've got that. Even uh, you know, in the administrative fee, big, big difference. I mean, it, it just, and, and there again, Richard and I have had that conversation, and he understands you know, that as well. But the, the biggest piece is turning this over to a group that really has full control over how money is invested. And it, and it takes it out. Because the council has and, and nothing has been anybody passed, whatever. You've either been involved with pensions or you have not. And it's, a, it's either been a curse to me or, I guess, a benefit to have been involved with pensions for 20-something years and understand what it is. And, and Rich, there again, Richard understands. Taking it out of necessarily the council's hands and putting it in a group with GMA, and they control how much you keep in cash and how much you have in bonds and how much you have in stock, and that's huge. That That is a huge thing to the to the residents of the city of Tifton that are funding this, the employees that are receiving the benefit. And so you hear lots of things, but that, that's coming from somebody who, who resisted and, and was opposed, but over the last year, come to realize that this is the best thing for the employees and it's the best thing for the taxpayer. And uh, it's, it's just a benefit. And, and Richard and I one-on-one -on -one realizes and, and understands and, and agrees considering that this is this is best for the, for the city of Tipton. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Jack. I, I want you to know how much I appreciate the trust you have in us, and I'll let you know that we're going to do everything we can to make sure that that bears out and that you can keep trusting us. Okay, so, thank, okay. You. thank you. All right, that being said, uh, we <coughs> need to um, approve the resolution authorizing the transfer of assets first, so I will take a motion to that effect if that's what you so desire. So moved. All right, we have a motion to approve the uh, transfer of assets. Second. And we have a second. Is there any further discussion? Thank you. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? 
All right, the next uh, part of this would be the uh, to approve the ordinance adopting the retirement agreement with the Georgia Municipal Employees Benefit System. Um, if there's any discussion about that, any, any Pete, do you have any information we'll share no, on that? Uh, no, in, in the last uh, exchange uh, I did, you know, we had uh, detailed talks about this. Um, some had, uh, you know, different thoughts. Uh, some took that all in and lumped it. Uh, some of the enhancements that we talked about just for the, uh, the folks that are here that, for instance, if you served any time in the military, uh, you would get one year uh, towards your retirement. That's, that's in the new plan. Uh, the others is talking about, uh, Randy mentioned, the, the, the uh, death benefit for spouses. Uh, we corrected that. Um, some of the uh, changes, uh, the portability, which is pretty standard, but we talked about uh, the percentages uh, of contributions. So all you know, that has, has stayed. And uh, you know, we talked about a couple other things, but uh, all in all, it, it's well presented. Um, and uh, we even talked about the public safety side. So however you want to approach that. I think we're solid, uh, and I'm proud to deliver something like this to our employees. Okay. Right, Mayor, I was, I was not here at our last meeting. I know you guys discussed this, but I want to make a statement to say that I'm a huge proponent. I think there was some discussion about changing um, the years of service and age from 80 to 75 for sworn in public safety personnel. Um, I, I think uh, those guys they see uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of things during their time in service. And gals, uh, rather than and gals, you know, we have gals. Huh? We have gals and girls, guys and girls, mm -hmm. everybody. You know. um, but I would like to see that change. I, I don't know what was discussed in the meeting, but I would like to see it go from 80 to 75, if the council so wishes. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to that effect. To make those changes as well as changing uh, the years of service and age from 70, uh, 275 from 80 for sworn in public safety personnel. Okay, this would be in addition to the recommendations for the one year military. The one year military, uh, the change in the- uh, For the death benefits. The death benefits. Okay. And percentages con contributed. Yes, the 3%. Um, and right now, the way the plan is, it's, we have a couple variations. So you could be um, 62 plus your years of service. You could be other ages, and all equals 80. And then, you know, from our talks, um, I did the public safety exclusively, mm -hmm. a com combination of 80. Your age plus your years of service equals Total 80. 75. And that's, that's, yeah, that's what I want to change to okay. 75. Okay. All right. Is that a motion? That is a motion. So moved. All right. Is there a second? I can, go with it. Okay, I was going to say I can make a, I can't make yeah. a motion, but I can you second. But second. You yeah. want me to say? Okay. Yeah. All right, I will second that, Wes. Thank you. All right, I will call for any further discussion. Yeah. And nothing. Not, I mean, I take positions and people out of it, and just just mm -hmm. in theory. But to go to yeah. seventy-five, or I mean, think about eighty. Somebody sixty with twenty years, okay, versus sixty-five yeah. with. And so, you know, 55 and 20. I don't know. I, I struggle at, at retiring at 55 with 20 years at 75 and realize this person can you know, live 30 more years, and, and we're already into a defined benefit plan, realizing that we can get into that discussion about the defined benefit, which says we're going to get the same amount for the next 25 years or 30 years. Lots of studies show that cities are going broke over defined benefit plans. They can't afford them, which is exactly why private industry got rid of them 25 and 30 years ago. So to now make it more lucrative, if somebody can retire at 55, and how many years is that, and what's the cost to taxpayers versus well, the 60, at least go to 60 and 20, well, that's a pretty darn good deal to, to, to retire 60 and 20 years and you're going to get paid for the next, could be 25 and some odd years. That is a very good, you won't find that anywhere else. Well, but let me, let me address, this is specifically on the 75 number, it's specifically for public safety. I realize that. And I think that, um, I think that those, 
men and women who work in law enforcement, firefighting, any type of public safety first responder position, one, they're putting their lives on the line every single day in a different way than any other city employee is involved in, in how they take care of the community. And I think that they suffer as a result of that. And I think they suffer burnout. I think that they suffer challenges and issues that are hard to, to deal with um, that are different than someone maybe who has been in a um, maybe an accounting uh, position or a customer service position. Um, we also need to recruit public safety. And if there's any carrot that we can offer that would help them to make a decision to come to Tifton, we have a great, it sounds like we're gonna have a great retirement package, but if we could offer something special for our first responders and those sworn police officers and, and certified firefighters, to me, that's that's a. It, you're not talking about a large percentage of the city employee base, so I, that's why I support it. I think it's the right thing to do. I think it's the right thing to do for those people who are in a very different level of interaction and involvement with the community than most than the rest of the city employees. Well, let's hear from them. Let's hear what they got. Well, We're putting them on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> We're putting them on the spot. I don't want to put them on the spot. But what what were you saying, Pete? Uh, not to, and, well, if someone wants to say something, okay. uh, Randy, not to put them on the spot from an actual order standpoint, he may have some statistics about you know ages and percentages. Okay. Please. Mayor, Council. Um, Mr. Jack, I think to your point where you're saying 65 and 15 um, is probably unheard of in the public safety sector. Um, people starting in this business at 40 is almost unheard of unless they come from another department, transfer over into this department. Majority of people is going to be in their early 20s or, or, or in the latest 30 before they get started in, this, in the public safety area. As you think as the firemen um, in, in the police department, as far as fire department goes, you know, we wear 75 pounds of gear along with our body. We're, we're doing physical fitness every day. Um, we constantly talking about saving on health care. And as your age rises, what's gonna happen? You know, you're gonna start having problems. Getting up at two or three o'clock in the morning when you're 55 or 60 years old, jumping on the truck, going to a call, jumping off the truck, grabbing a hose line, pulling that hose line out, going inside of a burning building, pulling someone out of that burning building is very taxing on a young man, much less an old person. So that's gonna be one of the biggest fears that I have is we're gonna start losing firefighters. Because everybody, and as I told one of the previous city managers, he said, why are you worried about this? If you're an officer, I said, everybody's not an officer. Mm -hmm. We still got firefighters at 60 years old. We got firefighters at 55 years old. Everybody doesn't make it up that chain. So, being said that, me, myself, as far as the fire department, who protects the citizens of this city, number one, we don't want them getting hurt. We don't want the citizens being hurt because they're getting hurt because they can't do the job because of their age. Uh, healthcare costs is gonna rise because of their age, no matter how much we do to stay in shape and eat well, and we are doing a great job of that. Our physical agility test this year dropped by four and five minutes because of the physical fitness plan we started. But it's the same point is you can't roll back years of constantly answering those calls. And it's not just physical, it is mental. You know, three times I had the privilege of helping save someone's life. 27 times, I did. That's in my mind. I think about it every day. They think about it every day. That's something we deal with every day. And if we can help that by getting out of this at an earlier age to go on, nobody's going to quit working. They're going to continue to work somewhere at a lower paced job that's not quite as stressful, physical, or mental. So that's why I'm in favor of it. That's why the guys are here. They're in favor of it. They do it every day. You know, I don't know what else to tell you. 
and said, you know, we, we're pleading our case for y'all to please help us. Thank you. And, and, and I, I appreciate it. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm you yourself know, I'm certainly you know, support firemen, policemen, that kind of thing. Push to raise, you know, the pay, as we and to raise the staffing, if you recall, a year ago. So, you know, my position has been a lot of people come and stay four or five years, six years, and are gone. Okay. Well, pension doesn't do anything. Wrong. I'm saying, to me, you change a pension, raise the pay several dollars an hour, where people see it, the, the firemen see it, and the policemen see it in the paycheck today. That's what I, you know, I, I push for that as much, if not more, than, than the other, because it, it's a week to week trying to make ends meet <coughs> but versus a lot of somebody these 25 years down the road. Right. Most people are living. What you know? What most what of these guys today? though have been here for a long time. And same thing with our police department. They've been here. Uh, uh, okay, raise your hand if you've been here five years. At least five years. So, I mean. About 10 years. 10 years. I mean, these guys, they, they're not going anywhere. I, I mean, you're always gonna have some turnover. I'm just asking okay, you to support it. I, I don't know. <laughs> what, I, what I hear from the chief and the turnover, this other room is, is different from I know, I know, but we need something to attract and keep, not just firefighters, but, but police officers. And my, and my position is, are they coming looking at the pension? Are they come looking at what's the starting pay, and what's the pay gonna be, you know, which one is more important? I would, and, and I can't speak to everybody other than I know somebody left a position to go somewhere else, and I said, well, you know, they said, well, it's a much better benefit. I said, what about the pension? Oh, well, it's a 3% it's a defined Contribution much better than, than what we got here. I said, really? Clearly, they didn't know what it did. This was somebody in the this was somebody in the office that should have known better, but yeah. but they didn't. I say most people look if they get starting pay, what they're going to be in a year, two years, tends to be more. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. I just okay. well, we appreciate what y'all do for us. As far as the pay, you've raised the pay. That's been a blessing. You give us full staffing again. That is that is great because we we struggle for a little bit. We're crawling through, we're going through, we're, we're, um, we're listening to what you're saying about these reports in the paper as they do get old, you know, as city employees, that does get old. Um, you know, you worry about that. So that's just a little bit more to worry about. Um, but as, as Captain Cooper told me, you know, the studies show that firefighters live, live 10 to 15 years less than anyone else. They um, just burn we, out. We constantly, have, but they do. we constantly have problems with, with cancer, you know. Um, they do. I just had cancer cut out my arm. Did it have anything to do with firefighter service? I don't know. Could have. Uh, people people have this all the time. Um, I just think that um, once you get past 55, you know, it's, it starts getting tough. And um, we're just asking that y'all uh, just help us out. Very valid points. But thank you very much, Mr. Jack, for what you do. I understand how you are with numbers, and, and I applaud you for that. That is a, that's a We that's all a understand thing. that, don't we, Rojo? Yeah, we, we know. We sit here and watch it. We know. But anyway, uh, any more questions? Okay. Uh, is there anything else can I do? Can I say anything Well, else? well thank you for, for addressing that. I, I appreciate Absolutely. your, your comments. Well, well these guys are they're, they're a great group. We're, we're no question. blessed to have them. Everyone, um, I agree. When times are down, they're still up. So, you know, I'll follow them and do what they do every day. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Chief. Yep, I appreciate that, uh, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I want to comment on kind of what Jack had said about uh, cities not being able to afford. That is not the city of Tiffany's case. These changes are going to be minimum to uh, the overall cost of the pension plan. Uh, this is the right thing to do. This back to the blue, this back to the red. There's a lot of words, a lot of people say these words, but no action is taking place. And I think uh, we ought to take action and make that commitment to support these men, these public safety folks that put their lives on the line every day for us. I appreciate that. 
And with that said, I'm ready to make my motion. Okay. We, well, we, well, the motion has been made and, and seconded. <laughs> so if there is no further discussion, I will call for the vote. All those in favor of these changes, do we need to itemize those that back out? Or we, you got those, Jessica? You got everything? I think the other changes were already in there. He okay. was just making the, the motion was from 80 to 75. Okay. Right. okay. So that being said, I will call for the vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Is there anybody opposed? Yeah! <laughs> I'll tell you this, there's not many times that we get applause. No, there's not. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's not. We'll take that. Just, just for the record, I can argue both sides of everything. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, yes you can. So, okay. okay. All right. Uh, now, we, uh, I think, if I've got my order correct still, we are um, to the section of, uh, <laughs> no, we're not on number five, stop it. We're on the ordin ordinance to annex the um, acreage on Highway 125 North. Uh, okay. Mayor Council, just uh, for your information, that, the actual amount that's being annexed is about 6.8 acres. That's a portion of the 23.5 Okay. This application was amended previously. Okay. Uh, and your ordinance will reflect that. Reflect that. There okay. is a lesson accepted by the 10 foot strip. And it's approximately 6.8. Okay. Acres. Did everybody got that? Okay. So it's not 23.54 acres as is printed on our agenda. It's 6.8 acres. That's so right. that being said, and this is for the, um, the project submitted by David Deloach, which we spoke about at the uh, at the workshop, and and uh, excited about that project if everything moves forward. So I will take a motion at this point regarding that annexation. So moved. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there a motion second? Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? All right, excellent. And now the flip side of that is the ordinance rezoning uh, that acreage to change it from County AU to City R12, so I will take a motion to that effect. So moved. All right, is there a second? Second. We have a motion second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Congratulations, Mr. DeLitch. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your project. Very excited about that. Uh, the next item on our agenda, we should be back on our regular order of things, is our city manager report. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the, the first item, I'd like to um, ask Wayne to come up and uh, just give a snapshot of financials as we uh, one month out of closing first quarter. Uh, 
big line item there is we'll, uh, there will be a check being cut to the uh, Tourism Association for their portion this month for the first two months. Third page is our water fund. Uh, the water fund, in, uh, so far the two, for two months, revenues total 472000 Their expenditures total 269870 And right now, revenues of over expenditures of just, just under $203,000. Then on our sewer fund, revenues total 559,649. Expenditures for the two for the first two months total 440,926 for the public works section. Other other financing sources of another 29,543 for total expenditures of 470,469 dollars. Our revenues are over expenditures in this fund by just over 89. Gas fund, which is on the fourth page, uh, total revenues for the first two months, 430934 Total expenditures, 279450 Right now, revenues are going over expenditures of 151000 and some change there. Last is our solid, solid waste fund. Uh, right now, revenues showing 514032 Total expenditures, 219617 Right now, revenues are expenditures of 294000 uh, some of the things that what we do have are one-time uh, payment are going to GMA for our leases. Those do not come in October. So those lease payments will be showing up as a one-time thing year, which several funds have stuff that's being leased out, including the solid waste fund and the general fund mainly is where most of it is for those payments will be coming from. You won't see those from in a month or two on go over the financial. Question about the solid waste fund. That's the it's in it's in the news. You know when when ESG does things for that, does it get charged to the solid waste fund, or does it just get absorbed by the city and tipped it into the no. budget? Not not yet. Uh, I can tell you both the county and the ESG. Uh, we're going to make that decision probably in October when we bring forward our recommendations. Uh, I'm under the assumption that uh, the landfill needs to pay back the general fund. <coughs> the same goes for the county. If the county comes and does something for the landfill, then you pay the county. Then it should come out of the out of the landfill the money, just the way the BSG does it. So the, the landfill needs to be self-sustaining. Yes. We can't have the city paying for some things, the county paying for some things, and it kind of hides the fact that wait a minute, landfill is not That's self-sustaining. Right. So. Just just on the basic uh, my calculations on the landfill, just as we sit right now, we're ninety-eight thousand dollars over budget. So. Uh, all the invoices are starting to come in. We're going to calculate uh, both the public works uh, side on the general fund to get the, get that back in line. So. When was the last time the tipping fees were increased? 2008. 50 cents. <coughs> ten, ten years later, we're still sitting on tipping fees. You just got to, you know, and I think the county's probably in agreement. You just can't go ten years without raising something like that. Sure. Okay. Any questions? I have no questions. John, um, no questions. Next, I, I'd like to uh, take just an opportunity, and she's going to kill me, but to brag on Jessica uh, White. And, and I wanted to let everybody know that uh, she has just completed her clerk training, and she is eligible now for a master certification as a city clerk. Uh, this is a really high honor, very hard work uh, that, puts in, that goes into this um, as far as classes, uh, academics, um, mentoring with other clerks, but taking part of the Clerks Association. And I think that uh, that's that just bit well spoken for Jessica and what she does for Tifton. So we appreciate um, her achieving that. And she has one more uh, thing to do, and that's a, a actual a project that she has to do for our city. Uh, and she has to do that by February. So we're working on some topics to do that. And she'll present that to the, the, uh, the Clerks Association. But uh, we're real proud of her, and uh, we appreciate her efforts. So I want to Jessica. share that. Jessica, good job. And I know the chief. Uh, I'm going to call him back up, if if you would. I, I had a note here uh, just to brag on uh, the fire department. You know, just one year ago, just looking back, um, the chief said, "Hey guys, we're going to do an agility test," and they all looked at him like he was crazy. Uh, but again, putting on packs, they going upstairs, uh, doing. 
things in the line of work and, and obviously he takes he and his staff take it very, very seriously. So uh, I got to look at that and watch it last year. And uh, some of the guys said, wow, you know, uh, this is good. I'm glad we're doing it. Some of the other ones said, well, we got a lot of work to do. But I can tell you again, uh, Denise and what and, and Morgan and what the wellness committee, I'm gonna talk about this every chance I get. The wellness committee is really starting to succeed. And the fire department has taken on a exercise program. And the chief uh, just did an agility test again this year. They've cut an average of five minutes off the time just by doing things uh, you know, on, on a weekly basis for exercising and get their cardio up, but the agility test is pretty strenuous. So congratulations to you and your department for doing that. Uh, and so, <laughs> you know, I told you all ago, thank you for bringing our staff back to where it needs to be. So, Bruce, <coughs> you and Jason. The last two firefighters that we hired that, that brought us up to snuff, as you say, puts us at lead man shifts again. Jason Demos and Brooke Ohm. Uh, Brooke's father, uh, Terrell Ohm, or Red, he's a, he's a firefighter, been with us for 30 years. And um, so it's just a, it's a good Brent? thing to see Brent? Brent following what? his steps. Where did he get Red was here a minute ago. Son. son. Uh, I don't think he was here. Uh. But, oh, okay. But these guys just got through with eight weeks at the Georgia Fire Academy. They, they passed the flying colors, and as I told them, this is only the beginning. So this past weekend, I had them in extrication class Saturday and Sunday, so they passed it. And instructors called and told me, said those guys were absolutely amazing. They really jumped in there and were learning. So but this is our future, and this is what we're proud of, and this is what we can continue to grow with right now. So. Well, we're proud of you guys. One more thing, I'm not going to leave Chief Dowdy out. Uh, I want to brag on he and, and Captain Hyman. Where did they go? They, they left. They left. <laughs> well, I can't go into specifics. I, I sent you some uh, notes on it this week. Uh, we're doing some work in the PD now that a lot of you have been asking about. And I could ju I'll just say that we're, we're in deep in the community now. Uh, our fingers on the pulse and a lot of illegal activities, namely drugs. Uh, and some other activities. Uh, and last week, uh, we exercised the first search warrant, uh, and it's, it's starting to produce. Very proud of them uh, for doing that. They're heading heading that, that up with intensity, uh, and I'm looking forward to great results uh, from the PD. So I, I wanted to well, share, that, come. share that with you. <laughs> <laughs> some of the, um, the equipment uh, and the dog and doing things that the community is expecting. And uh, we just made a, uh, a great testimony of that a couple weeks ago. And uh, we're just certainly proud of, of what you're doing and how you're doing it in, uh, in the neighborhoods now. So it's making a huge difference. So I'm glad to right. share that with you all. Congratulations, Star PD. Um, on our board report, if it's okay with you gentlemen, I would like to postpone any discussion on board report. I should have mentioned that when we were approving the agenda, so let's, let's just delay that till our uh, workshop. And now we will conclude with our mayor and council reports, and then we will go into executive session. So, Councilman Terrell, anything you want to share with us or talk about? Or? I'm glad we got that behind, got that retirement team behind us. Uh, we, I, for one, indeed, want to thank the fire department and the police department for their work in, in, in Chipton, making Chipton a great place to, to live, work, and play. So I thank you guys, and if there's ever anything I can do for you, call me. I got you. There you go. All right. Councilman Paul. I agree with what that um, and I hate the spuds gone but and don't look at me Rob like you better shut up <laughs> <laughs> I tend to get myself in trouble I mean I already 
the firemen don't know where I live, so I think I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, but, I bet uh, they do. <laughs> so, you know, Spud mentioned that he was, he was there in you know, 2005, and his comment, an agreement is an agreement. Well, you know, when an agreement has a clause that says, if you want to end this agreement, here's what you do. Okay? So, it would be different in that if there wasn't a clause that said, here's how you get out of it if you want to end it. So making a statement that an agreement's an agreement, it makes no sense because there was a clause to get out. Uh, for either party. For either party. Yes. E either party. I've talked to other councilmen that, that were on the, the council at the time, and the only reason, their, their view was, the only reason the city got into it in the first place was because they were moving toward consolidation. Is it had, had consolidation not even been discussed or subject, it would have never, the city would have never gotten into this agreement which does nothing to benefit the city at the end of the day. I mean, it just doesn't. We're here to represent the city. We're not here to represent the county, even though we live in the county. You've heard my talk about, I don't think the county commission, uh, new members excluded, who have sitting here, represent those of us that live inside the city limits. They've made it clear. We're not their concern. It's okay if we pay taxes and we don't get the service, that's a problem for me. They don't worry about that. And they made it very clear that's that's their their case, but we represent the residents of the city, and this water business, the 2005 agreement was not a good agreement. We had not a, a, a chance to get out of it, and we said we're ending it. Can't help it if the county says, well, we're not going to acknowledge that you're getting out of it. You know, I say we'll read the contract. It says we can get out of it. So, spuds off a little bit there. And I, you know, they, they did not hear. got to say about that. Okay. All right. Well, I will conclude things. Uh, it's been a busy, it's going to be a busy week this week. I uh, started off this morning with a um, presentation at Tiff County High School at the PAC for Constitution Week. I tell you, we've got some very um, impressive high school students that are very involved in, in various organizations through the high school and, and very glad to be a part of that. And uh, a proclamation was given this morning to the Daughters of the American Revolution uh, proclaiming this week Constitution Week in Tifton. It is in our country, but also we proclaimed it in, in Tifton. Um, I also wanted to invite my fellow councilmen. There is a presentation tomorrow evening at 5.30 at the Agarama from our tourism board who has contracted with a private consultant to uh, help us go to the next level from a tourism standpoint and, and marketing and that kind of thing. That presentation will be tomorrow at 5.30 at the Agarama if you'd like to come to that. And then we'll wrap up the week in Pearson with the Georgia Municipal Association legislative meeting uh, that afternoon, Friday afternoon in Pearson, if you can go to that. I'm planning on attending, uh, so we can certainly ride together if you'd like to. But um, as always, it is an honor and a pleasure to serve with you and to serve all of you. And um, we do need to go into executive session, so I will need a motion from one of you to go into ex executive session for legal and personnel matters, if you will. So moved. So moved. Second. second. We have second. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We'll take about a five-minute break, and then we'll go into executive session. Thank you, everyone.